<laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing our first community showcase. I want to do this monthly so if you want to have any of your work featured then please comment down below or send me some pictures. So we're starting off with a little bit of what I'm working on. So this is my Mask of the Vengeful Dusk. I'm pretty happy with the scheme as a whole. I think, you know, I'm, I'm working on it, but I think it's pretty good. Um, trying to get those diamonds done. I've been using Duncan's technique, so um, painting over contrast with black lines and then adding the fang with some Fenrisian grey highlights. Um, you know, it's, it's coming on okay, but... Uh, Still got a lot of work to do, um, lots and lots of bikes that I'm working on, which does seem to take quite a lot of time. So you'll see in a moment, uh, these are four of the ones I'm working on. I've got another four that I've, I'm also working on, but they're not quite as far. Now we have Peter Hellerman's Harlequin Troop. Um, beautiful looking scheme. I love this uh, red and blue with the black as well. I think they're really well done. The basing on them is far better than mine. And to be fair, the, the diamonds are also just so much neater. They look really, really good. Love those blood effects as well on the weaponry and, and yeah, some, some really nice work there. So well done to him and thanks so much for sending that pick in. Next up, we have Rob Bullion's sort of Yanari Harlequins with these really bright, dynamic red, black and white colours. I think they look fantastic. Um, so he did send me a little bit about the inspiration. He says that he was inspired by the character Motley, I'm guessing uh, the same Motley that I'm thinking of. Um, and he wanted to do a couple of the Yanari things, but also likes the idea of the Frozen Stars. So it's sort of similar to the Frozen Stars white colours, but then adding that red in there for the typical Yanari look. And I think they look great as well. I love these muted colours for some of them as well. The Drakari, obviously, with them uh, look fantastic. The Shadow Seer with that silver mask and... Uh, yeah, all of these bright colours uh, really, really shining through. So I think they are really good work. Um, I would say as well that it does take a lot to do these diamonds quite so well. So on both of the other masks we can see that. And here I'm pretty sure we can see on the Troop Master a heart on the knee. And I, I don't know if I'd have the patience for that. So well done him. They look really fantastic. Thank you, Rob, for sending those in. And last but not least, we have Arthur Demand's Harlequins. They look beautiful as well. So he sent me quite a lot of information about these guys. But uh, essentially, when he was working on his characters, he decided that he was going to go for um, a real storyline behind it. So it's about this, this kind of renegade solitaire and, and all the characters that are involved in that solitaire story. So I'll go through the names. The solitaire is known as the Unseen Empress. Uh, the left shadow seer is Silkweeder Nylith, and she is the one who guides the performance of the Silk Mirage mask, so the mask of his own invention. Then the right shadow seer is the Astral Scryer, and then we have the Death Jester's Remorseless Sentinel and Coil of Despair who are apparently twins who, who very rarely perform alone, so they're really, really cool. Then, last but not least, we have the Troop Master, known as Crescendo. I really like the work on this. I think they've been beautifully uh, converted and painted, and there's a lot of extra work that has gone into this as well. And that, that pink paint scheme is amazing, as we can also see here with the, the troop, just the standard troop with that pink and then the, the white and black colouring as well. I think they're really, really nice looking, um, and I'm sure you'll agree. So he says he uses the Zephyr Glaives and the Blades as different weapons. Um, you know, understandably, obviously, the Zephyr Glaives can't be taken by troops. I think we all wish that they could be. And the Blades are fairly ineffectual other than being used as extra wound models really so thank you so much arthur for that um and i'm really really glad he sent this one in to me i think it's really beautiful all three examples have been really beautiful work so hopefully um we'll have a lot more lined up for next month's community showcase as well if you're interested just uh, comment down below or send me some pictures i'd love to see your work thank you very much and i'll see you next time Goodbye from me.